probably better without the face mask. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be here at the LEAP conference and uh, actually be the first speaker of the first event in what I think will be an annual event. So we're very excited to be here as Ericsson. I must start by noticing I've, I've enjoyed many years of working and traveling here in the Middle East, and I've seen firsthand the transformation that has happened. And this, of course, includes something that's close to our heart at Ericsson, the digital transformation. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been at the forefront of this transformation and today has a flourishing technology ecosystem and actually a, a progressive regulatory environment. And this is a testament to the ambitions of the Kingdom's vision for 2030. And that's by cultivating a digital society. And digital, that's where the world is going. During the crisis, like the global pandemic, underlying trends almost always get reinforced. And in the, it's clear that with the COVID-19, what has been reinforced and accelerated is the trend of digitalization. The way we live, learn, work, and interact with each other has forever changed in an irrevocable way. But like all shifts, this will create new winners and new leaders. I would say a prerequisite in the new world, in the new digital world, is actually superior connectivity. Cloud computing, AI, mobile edge compute, all of those key technologies are nothing without connectivity. So what's needed is actually the secure, reliable connectivity that 5G can offer. And I think leaders in this new era will be countries that build out the digital infrastructure first. And the steps taken here in the kingdom clearly puts Saudi Arabia at the front of the pack in, in 5G. But let me share a few numbers with you. Today, there are more than 8 billion subscribers in the mobile ecosystem connected with one standard. That's unique because that one standard has driven down cost of communication to a very low level, making mobile connectivity affordable all across the world. At the end of 2021, there were actually 660 million 5G subscribers. And we covered more than 2 billion people around the world. Mobile technology is the fastest scaling technology the world knows, and 5G is actually the fastest scaling mobile technology ever. And we expect by 2027, it will cover more than half of the mobile communication. Connecting billions of people around the world has delivered countless societal as well as economic benefits. But I think the next step is much more exciting. I think connectivity is actually the key ingredient to solve our time's biggest issue, the climate crisis. We must all work together to limit the warming to 1.5 degrees over the pre-industrial levels. And connectivity offers an essential and powerful tool to help us. And why is that? Yeah, today, the ICT industry is about 1.4% of global greenhouse gases. Yet, and we have shown that in our research, we can actually lower total greenhouse gases by 15%. And in reality, that means that the ICT industry by itself can actually address a third of cutting the global greenhouse gases in half by 2030. That's an important part. 
but we are also an industry that's very committed to this work. Today, over a third of the world's mobile operators, including here in, in the kingdom, are committed to net zero and science-based targets to reduce their carbon emissions. Another example is our 5G factory in the US. And it's a combination of industrial IoT architecture and leveraging 5G connectivity. We have actually been able to improve the productivity by 2.2 times what we see in other factories. Equally important, we use 24% less energy, 75% less wastewater than we see in similar facilities that are not Industry 4.0 enabled. I think this case illustrates a couple of things. Of course, it shows that we can do a lot of good things for the environment. But I would also say that it can fundamentally change the way we structure manufacturing in the future. So all of a sudden, we can build much more flexible manufacturing facilities close to the end consumer and avoid a lot of shipping. And we have seen that in our factories as well. But digitalization has also shown that businesses can work differently. So if we take ourselves, we actually migrated to work from home in, in the beginning of 2020. So since then, we've had 80% of our people working from home with very little impact on our deliveries, or actually no impact on deliveries. But during this time, we cut travel by 75%. I think this is just the the first step in showing that business travel will irrevocably have changed in the future. But sustainability makes good business sense, as I've shown. But I think it makes also sense to think about in a government interaction with its citizens. And it can actually improve the government service and actually do it in a more cost-efficient way as well. FirstNet is a good example. It's a US agency that built an entire communications ecosystem on a mission-critical mobile broadband capabilities. The FirstNet ecosystem actually is a, features a shared radio network that's highly secure, and it's been designed to serve the public safety community. Since 2020, FirstNet has covered everything from drive-through COVID-19 testing to actually natural disasters like earthquakes as well as wildfires. But it's interesting to see the average first responder today consumes more than double the amount of mobile dat data compared to a consumer. So we can see the value that the first responder can see in access to data. I, th I see 5G as the biggest innovation platform the world has ever seen. And now, the next step, once the platform is in place, is actually to establish the next step in driving the digital economy. And that's to stimulate entrepreneurs and innovators to build new applications on top of this network. So the key here is actually to create the ecosystem that attracts the best brains and the best ideas and provide them with capital to expand. So I think one of the most important things when we think about the future is to drive that development of the whole ecosystem. And that's something we want to be involved in as well. And just as an example, Last year, we established a collaboration with King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, together with STC, to stimulate the local ecosystem. But like always, new technologies will create new winners. 4G, as a network, was first built out in the United States of America and China. And both of these two continents came to dominate the consumer over the top ecosystem, or in a way, the digitalization of the consumer. 
5G that will drive digitalization of enterprises in addition to the consumer will actually offer other continents and countries the opportunity to establish new winners. I would say with the foresight of building out the 5G early, Saudi Arabia, along with other countries in the region, have established one of the prerequisites to be a global startup hub for the next decade to come. We know, however, that digitalization is actually not spread evenly across the world. Today, roughly half of the world's population is still unconnected or offline. Access to affordable connectivity might be one of the biggest inequalities in the future digital world. Ericsson is committed to reducing the digital divide. And we want to make broadband accessible to everyone. One step towards this goal is the three-year partnership with UNICEF in support of their GIGA initiative, which aims to connect every school by 2030. Equally important is digital literacy. This is why we've committed to providing an additional one million children and young adults access to digital learning and skill development by 2025 through our Connect to Learn initiative. But yet another way that we can help bridge the digital divide is to inspire the next generation of innovators. Each year, we run a competition and we actually invite university students from around the world to compete in Ericsson Innovation Awards. And there, the task is to imagine the possibility for connectivity to solve really big global challenges. And the winner for 2021, which we just awarded in the end of the year, designed a tablet that actually is reading material for vis vis visually impaired people in real time. So all of a sudden, we're giving access an equal opportunity to the visually impaired as well. So to conclude, in 2021, we renewed our company purpose to create connections that makes the unimaginable possible. Our belief is that connectivity creates possibilities for all and is the heart of everything we do in the future. I have no doubt that 5G represents a tremendous opportunity for Saudi Arabia. Technological innovation is overwhelmingly a force for good as it's improving lives for all our people. And I think this fundamental belief is shared by the Kingdom's Vision 2030, which is going to create a thriving digital society in Saudi Arabia, and maybe most importantly, with NEOM, Saudi Arabia is building possibly the first city on the planet built for the metaverse. So no question in my mind, the future is green in many ways. To solve future challenges, whether they be digital inclusion or the climate crisis, we must work together in new partnerships and new constellations between enterprise, government, private sector, public sector, universities, institutions to shape this better world. A meeting place like LEAP, where people are coming together from different countries, industries, organizations from all over the world, I think is a great place to start forming these relationships. The mobile miracle has already connected billions of us. And now we're on the way to connecting everything. So I invite you all to join us for this journey, to help us realize a world where limitless connectivity improves lives, redefines businesses, 
and pioneers a sustainable future. With that, thank you.